Welcome back to another stream, late night stream on a Friday night. Hopefully you guys are all well, man. Please make sure you drop a like on the stream. Please make sure you are subscribed to the channel as well. Let's get some yes, yes in the chats for some shout outs. Let's see who we've got in the building. By the way, there's a lot to discuss tonight. We're going to be discussing Liverpool because obviously the rumours coming out, news coming out that they reckon Alonso is, is favouring Bayern Munich over Liverpool. Where does that leave Liverpool as basically our closest rival over the last five, six years? Where do they stand? And of course... FFP again. Now, we spoke about it a little bit this morning, but since this morning, there's been huge developments in the story regarding Leicester City. We're going to discuss that and sort of just the whole general FFP thing as well. And then as well, we will discuss transfers towards the end of the stream as well. Let's see who we've got in the building. Big up to Macolo. Big up to C, uh, G21. Uh, Brian here. Big up to Jamie, Herbal, Lazuli, Pulma, Nishat, D3, Osmodius, uh, Pulma, Ben L. Brett's in the building. Big up to Craig there as well. Hopefully you guys are all doing well. Please make sure you drop a like on the stream. I am joined by Joe Butterfield. Joe, how are you doing, man? You all right? All good. Yeah, yeah, all good. How about you? Yeah, man. Like, listen, international break is a bit dead. I was going to do a Spain watch along, um, but Rodri's not playing, so I'm not doing it anymore. So I can't no, 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 no point. I know. It was basically going to be like a pray along to, to make sure he doesn't get injured, but it is what it is. Listen, let's speak about let's speak about this old Leicester thing because it's kind of crazy, mate. Like we spoke about it a little this a uh, little bit this morning on the show that I had with Simon and Anton, but since then, there's been some huge developments. That some of the wording that Leicester are using is is mad strong. Like they are they are seriously not happy and they've got their lawyers all over this as well. They've now been hit with a transfer ban. The Premier League are obviously sending them to the independent um, sort of commission for a potential points deduction if they get promoted next season. But like, what's your take on all this, man? Because it's another club and, and it seems like Leicester as well are not going down the same path as Everton and Nottingham Forest by saying, oh yeah, sorry, I, we, we didn't mean to. They're like, they're fighting this big time. Yeah, it, it's it's a bit mad. Like, I, in a way, I'm kind of, I'm kind of loving it. Like all this, the, you know, this whole, like when we've been saying for the last however long that the FFP is just designed in a way that is fundamentally flawed to sort of keep big clubs happy. Um, they're all in positions where they can, you know, the, the, the teams that are already making hundreds of millions worth of revenue like every year are sorted with financial fair play. And we're now one of those clubs. Um, and now we're sort of looking at that, you know, that middle bracket of teams that have kind of, that have, uh, that have spent a bit beyond their means to try and sort of reach that next level. Um, be punished for it basically and it's 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 really sort of i don't i don't i don't think anybody, i don't think any of us want to see those kind of clubs punished but it is interesting that now that this is happening that suddenly all the all of a sudden we've all that the, the, the wider footballing community has kind of decided that you know ffp psr whatever you want to call it is flawed in some way and it isn't right um i think lester's response has been really strange to me um, I've not read it like so. There's obviously everyone will know um, Stefan Borson, who's like you know the go-to like FFP guy these days. Um, so I, I haven't read it in as much detail as he has. Obviously, he's probably got some more detailed things to say about this than I have. But it looks like Leicester's response is basically they don't think that the Premier League should be able to charge them because they're not in the Premier League anymore, and that they don't think the EFL should be able to charge them because they're basically <laughs> because next year they might not even be in the EFL. So they kind of, so their their response appears to basically be we are unchargeable by anybody because nobody can you know nobody like who who who's going to charge us and it's and it's a weird one but obviously if you've broken the premier league rules from, from when you were in the premier league then obviously the premier league are going to punish you like that's how that's that's how it works like i remember when they came up um before they won the, um, before they actually won the Premier League, they 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 broke FFP to get there. Like they 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 copped a fine the year after from the EFL. Um, it was only like a three point one million fine, but they but they they weren't too fussed about the fact that they weren't currently in the EFL when that happened. Um, so I think that says to me that they probably think that the punishment that's coming down, as, as you know, probably a fair assumption given what's happened to Forest and Everton, they they've looked at those punishments and thought ah, we really don't want this to happen to us this season. Because obviously, if you get a five or six point deduction in their position at the top of the championship, that could potentially mean they drop into the playoffs and that's by no means a guaranteed promotion. Um, yeah, it looks like they're just kind of, it looks like that rather than just accept responsibility and just take the punishment, they're going to try and sort of do what they can to try and drag this on as long as possible, presuming 
pr- presumably they're going to try and drag this into next season. I think they would rather start next season on like minus four points than get four taken off them now in the championship. Um, well, 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 here's the thing though, Joe, it's probably not going to be minus four points if they get it because, of course, Forrest got minus four and they yeah. cooperated. And so it was, yeah. six, but then obviously they got a two point deduction. Correct. Yeah. Because and also apparently Leicester's, um, what's it called? Leicester's um, breach is bigger than the than yeah. Forest is as well. So then there's the added question of like, will it actually be maybe instead of a six point, could it be a seven or an eight point? And then you've still not got the the deduction. So it, it's 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 incredible, really, the situation that Leicester are in. Because of course, if they do get promoted next season and then end up with maybe. Let's just say they end up with a seven-point deduction because it seems like it's a little bit uh, higher than Nottingham Forest. Like that's that's a lot of points. That's a lot. I'm, and, and you've and I know Leicester is slamming it, right? But Burnley also slammed it last year. And look at the state they're in. So yeah, to, for, for, they're going about it. In, and, and listen, it's kind of interesting that they're going about it in a different way. They're taking this head on, and and whether whether or not they're taking it on because they legitimately believe that they're not allowed to be charged or. Um, because I think I think part in, in the statement today, less I'm pretty sure Leicester say that like essentially what what the what the Premier League is doing is is unlawful, which is kind of yeah. again a strong word. So whether or not they actually believe that, or whether or not they're doing what you're you're suggesting, which is just dragging it on um, to benefit themselves, I, I don't know. But listen, I was listening to Talk Sport the the, the video that's gone up um, of Simon Jordan speaking with uh, Jim and and Steph Hamill's on there at the beginning, but. It, it, even Simon Jordan is 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 now saying he he thinks that you might have to suspend FFP or, or profit and sustainability rules right now because the whole thing is just a complete farce and it needs a complete and utter rethink. I mean, yeah. it's just it's just crazy. I mean, you've got Everton potentially being charged twice because the first one was on the old rules and now it's on the second rule, so they might be getting a two 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 deductions in one season. You've got Forest to who've got these deductions but don't agree with it. you got Leicester who are taking a completely different route to defending themselves. you got City who, I know it's a completely different situation, but ultimately, while that is hanging over Manchester City and hanging over our club, like people are going to be asking, like, what about Manchester City? I, I, I do get why they're asking that. I mean, I don't know. Do, do, you, do you think Simon's onto something? Do you think that maybe we do have to suspend these rules and, and come up with a, a better solution? Because it, it's, it's just a mess, man. I hope they do, uh, because if we imagine City with a few years without having to worry about FFP, it'd be unreal. Um, I think I think the, the 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 problem is that obviously FFP was brought in under the guise of not wanting another Portsmouth or another Leeds, where you know these big clubs just like become financially unstable, drop down a division. Go, you know, in the case of Portsmouth and stuff, go into potential um, administration and stuff like that. That's that's what they ultimately wanted to avoid, but. Whether whether by design or not, and I refuse to believe that it was not by design with the certain clubs um, who may or may not play in red, who are also in the Northwest, um, having their sort of input on what the, the rules turned out to be. It does seem to basically mean that if you're if you're making the extra revenue that the Champions League brings, if you're making the extra revenue that you know already being a well established global brand brings, then you're fine. And obviously that that that's fine for for, for 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 even us now. Like we're in that position where it doesn't matter to us. Um, but if you're if you're a Leicester who you had your moment in the sun when you won the league and everything naturally has quite has kind of like petered off and sort of gone back down to you know normal levels when you finish in mid seat mid to lower half table like every year in the Premier League, which then eventually culminates in getting relegated, like they they can't afford to like they've they've basically took on quite a few players when they were you know when they did get in the champions league when that happened and that wage structure has probably kind of been difficult to then readjust which has led to the kind of losses that have come with them they've made some big transfers that ne- didn't necessarily work out the season that they got relegated um and those kind of clubs you know what i mean like they they they, they spent money to try and spe- you know to to speculate on getting into that sort of top end of the table which is what the championship basically is every single year, like clubs running themselves into the ground with massive wage budgets and big and big transfers to gamble on getting into the Premier League to begin with. Mm-hmm. And then you get there and you just get slapped down with, 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 you know, with financial breaches the moment that you do anything to try and basically get above your station. Like you have to, it, it feels like every club 
has to pull a Brighton to get anywhere near the top of the table where you just buy like random South Americans for three million and just like get lucky every single time. Like that's not realistic. And so clubs are going to do what Premier League clubs can do because of the nature of the league and spend 20, 30 million on some pretty decent players from the rest of Europe on pretty decent wages. But now we're in a position where you need to basically be bringing in 100, 200 million worth of sponsorship revenue to sustain that. And Mm. that's not, that's, that's, you know, the Premier League is a massive league and gives a lot of brands and and companies and sponsorships all sorts of exposure that didn't exist 10 years ago. But Aston Villa aren't bringing in that kind of revenue. Like Leicester aren't bringing in that kind of revenue. And they're the kind of clubs that are going to be, you know, Leicester are being investigated now. Um, There was talk not long ago of Villa being very much on the ropes in terms of their sort of, you know, there's, 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 there's concerns about what they'll look like at the end of the season. Like, it's going to happen to more clubs. Uh, Chelsea, are obviously, you know, they're um, Stefan's been pretty, um, pretty consistent and strong on the idea that they are basically one hundred percent going to fail it in some form this summer, based on what their accounts look like. Where the, the league is fucked, like <laughs> it's it's mad. Like the Prem, the Premier League is taking half of its clubs to court and like punishing half of them. It's insane, and I don't understand how it's sustainable for the future. It it, it, it feels like it has to come to a head. But if you bring it in, if, if, if now you turn around and say, oh, well, we're, we're just going to sack it off then. We'll, we'll suspend it for a few years. Well then, well, then what do Forest do if they get relegated because of their points deductions? Like, what do, what do, uh, what do Everton do? Like, do you know what I mean? Like, this is it's, why it's, just, it's just a complete mess. And, and you know what? I really kind of like that, that, that comparison you did between getting into the top four and the promotion because it's exactly the same, just on a different scale, you know. Teams want to get in the Champions League because they want to get that Champions League revenue. If you can get the Champions League revenue, then you can invest in the players and you can try and get there and yeah. you can grow. And then if you're in the Champions League a lot, you'll, you will grow your revenues because the sponsors will want to sponsor you. you. They can then become that 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 secure club. But you have to speculate to accumulate. And, th- and this is what I don't like about this uh, this FFP thing and people keep saying to me, but LB LB, you can you can become uh, you can compete you can compete with this FFP. I think you can compete, but I think it only takes you so far. And I said this this morning. Everyone keeps on mentioning Brighton, Brighton this, Brighton that, Brighton this, Brighton that. I can guarantee you now 100 percent they will not make that next step. They are at the top because what they need to do now. If they want to make that next step, which is to get into the Champions League, right? Because they finish in they finish in round what like sixth to eighth, like for two, two, three seasons in a row, whatever. If they want to make that next step to the Champions League, they have to stop buying these two million pound players and they've got to go and get serious talent. Well, serious talent's gonna cost you 50, 60 million. That's gonna put the club at risk of, of failing FFP. So the only way then that Brighton can can not fail FFP is by getting top four. But it's, it's one of them because on one hand, they go, OK, we can make that step by buying these players. It's going to cost us more, but we need the Champions League revenue. OK, well, what about if we don't get the Champions League revenue? Yeah, yeah. And then, pe- and then people will go, well, you should have made better signings. What? Football's not about that. Football's not like <laughs> that. Sometimes you make a signing and everyone goes, that's going to be a top signing. It's going to be a <clears> top <throat> signing. And it don't work. Shevchenko, when he went to Chelsea, he would have thought that that would have just absolutely flopped the way it did. Like, he's a top player. Yeah, you know I mean, he goes to Chelsea and stinks the gaff out. Yeah, you know what I mean, like yeah. you can't, you can't just do that. So I, my worry, and and you know, my my, and it doesn't just go for the teams like Brighton who maybe are thinking about taking that next step to the to the uh, to the Champions League. Of course, New Newcastle are in that as well, and Aston Villa are in that. And whilst they'll probably find it a little bit easier because they are bigger clubs than Brighton, this also comes down to the Championship side as well. Because you know, are, are you are you going to get a situation where? You know, teams teams are looking at it, going, okay, well, we need to pump money into the team in the championship so we can get promoted and get that big cash cha- in the Premier League. But again, if they don't get promoted, then you know, are they going to fail the EFL um, profit and sustainability rules? If they do get promoted, are they then going to have the budget to to to, to buy players? Because I, I don't know what your take is. I don't know if you agree with me on, on on this, but I think the Premier League gap now between the Premier League quality and the Championship is just getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Yeah, if you it's look, ridiculous. Bro, if you look yeah at the bottom of the table of the Premier League, I'm not talking bottom three, right? I'm talking um, like lower lower end. Yeah, I'll whack it on screen actually so people can see. Right, look at these teams, man: Brentford, Everton, Palace, Bournemouth. These are good teams, man. These are some good players. Like Everton, if you look at their team, they got Pickford, they got Onana, they got Decore, they got 
DCL, who I don't really rate, but if he's fit, then maybe he can score a few goals. Yeah. They've got good players. Brentford, Vissa, you know what I mean? And, and Buemo, Tony. Yeah, you, you know, these players are good players. So, so if you're getting promoted, and I think, you, I think by the way, I think the proof's in the pudding because look at the bottom three. And by the way, Forrest are only in the bottom three because they got the deduction. If, if Forrest yeah. didn't have the deduction, the bottom three would be the three that came up. So I, I yeah. just think, that are, are we not getting ourselves into a situation, Joe, where teams that get promoted are just going to be like, the only way that we can compete is if we do what Forrest did. And I know people will say, well, Forrest spent the money a little bit shit. And maybe they did. But guess what? They didn't get relegated. So they succeeded in, in that sense. But if they do that, you're going to break the points. You're going to, you're going to break the rules and get a points reduction the year after. I just feel like, you know, that like the term the yo-yo club. I just feel like we, we could just get into a situation where teams get promoted. They go, we can only stay up if we spend a load of money. What's the point? Let's just get relegated, get the parachute payments and just go up, down, up, down, up, down. Because they, they're not going to be able to compete. Well, if you look at it in the other way as well, like if you look at the top of the championship at the moment, like Leicester and Leeds both went down last season, both probably going to get promoted. Southampton in the playoffs, potentially going to get promoted. Like if, if you look at like the, 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 it is going to just be a case of the three that come down from the Premier League are almost going to be guaranteed to go straight back up again because they have the financial parachute of the Premier League plus just sort of the general, you know, maybe not this season because I think obviously if Luton and Sheffield go down, they're not necessarily equipped to come straight back up in the same way that that, that Leeds and Leicester and Southampton necessarily were. Um, but we're in it like the, the the gap between the two divisions now is just so huge that it, if you're so say if you're like say Luton for example this season, it kind of reminds me a lot of like when when Burnley came up the first time round with Sean Dyche. Like obviously then they got relegated, sort of consolidated for a couple of seasons having been able to invest that money in that sort of their, their, their club's infrastructure generally and then came back up. And that's no doubt what Luton will do. I know they've got plans to make a new stadium. Um, this money from the Premier League will 100% go basically straight into that. And this is if Luton get relegated. They might not get relegated, in which case that's possibly like probably one of the biggest achievements of any club in English football in the last, well, since Leicester, got, since Leicester won it, basically. Um, I think that... It, this is this is kind of what those clubs can can at best hope for now. She, uh, Sheffield are the same way. They got promoted to the Premier League immediately. Got gutted for their best players. Like Tommy Doyle went back to Liverpool. Uh, went back to back to us, and then didn't want to go back on loan to them. Or we fancied that he wanted to challenge at a better club like Wolves, where he had a potential for a future transfer at the end of it. Um, James McAtee did in the end decide to go back to him, but it very much wasn't the plan from our point of view. Um, they had their, their, their star striker who helped basically get them promoted, got bought by Marseille because they were struggling financially. Like Even when you know that you have that massive 100 plus million payday coming that season, they'd still run themselves into the ground so much in the process of getting there that they needed to offload 20, 30 million worth of players before the end of that, that year, before the, before the July window, to the point where it just crippled them for the, for the Premier League season. And and that's basically going to happen every single time. Like unless unless you are like like Leicester, like what if they get there now? They're going to have people like th th a lot of their best players are going to be easy pickings this summer. I imagine. Like I think it might be a little bit different for them because the the the, the general squad is probably a little bit better. But if they struggled to meet FFP last year, they 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 haven't offloaded too many of the players this year. Like if they fucked it last year, what are the odds that they're going to pass this year? It's it's. They're going to be selling players left and right in the process of getting up. Leeds, maybe, I, I, I don't know. Leeds have got a massive fan base that probably generates quite a lot of money for them week, week by week, so it could be a little bit different for them. And then the playoffs are the playoffs. Like, if Ipswich go up, I, I, you know, they're going, to be in a, they're going to be in a Luton kind of position where they'll just be happy to come up and get the massive paycheck and maybe just probably go back down again, although their manager is very good. Um, yeah, it's, it just shows, this just kind of shows the, the massive divide between the Premier League and the Championship. And that is not too dissimilar, as, as we just said, like the, the, the gap between the Premier League's bottom, bottom 10, but like basically the bottom half of the Premier League and the possibilities of getting into that top seven bracket, basically, where European competition is on the cards and that extra revenue and that extra exposure, that extra sponsorship, etc. Like everyone else outside of that, and, and and when you consider as well that the clubs that are in that top that 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 top seven bracket, that's a that's a 
that's a special that's like a un, um like an exclusive club that's just growing year by year like there's us so you've got the top six the the, the big six so you've got us and then you've got newcastle who basically worked their way sort of kind of into that the, this season maybe not so much um villa are trying to break their way into that and make it a bit more of a regular thing um you know you've got these you've got so many clubs of uh, 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 in a position to sort of compete for those top seven positions that if you are a crystal palace or you are a bournemouth or you are a fulham you're kind of looking at it and just thinking like what's the, what's the what's the, like what's the fucking point like what, <laughs> what what's the best that we can aim for here like if we spend 20 30 million on you know a brazil some brazilian kid like a Polina or something like that if you go for someone like that for, for 20 30 million and you don't make the top six well you've just you just put your club in massive financial jeopardy for no reason and it's and it and it's and it's putting the Premier League in a position where so many clubs th- these with the rules as they currently stand, they're go- they're not going to take risks on players because in big signings because they know that if they don't get the reward at the end of it, they've got a massive like points de- they've got points deduction coming at the end of it, mm-hmm. and also the worst thing about it that is not being spoken about enough by people in general. You have to sell your academy kids to sort to to, to fund it. Yeah, like, it, that's one of it, those things, Joe. That like is a real un, unintended consequence of the rules. Like they didn't think of that at the time, did they? Could yeah. Because yeah. why would you, if, if if someone said that when they were? Oh, by the way, we're all going to have to flog our academy players because they're the ones who will actually generate the profit. Surely everyone will look at that and go, "Hang on a minute." Surely yeah, I don't. I don't good. need this. That's the opposite of what we want to do. I think someone someone came up with a good solution. I can't remember if it was Stefan or if it was just someone else I'd heard on a podcast. But I feel like the best solution that, that that is an easily solvable thing. Just change the rules so that if you sell an academy player for fifty mil, like it does, or, or say if you if you sorry if you keep hold of an academy player and you receive a bid of a certain amount of money from a club, I don't know. Say you receive like a thirty million bid for your academy player, and you say no, I want to keep him, like. You should be given some cap that, that that should reflect itself somewhere in the books that you decided to opt to keep an academy kid. Rather, I don't yeah. that it's something that's something that's so like mad that you can't it's, possibly it's, quantify that or or, well, or implement think, it yeah. really. I, I but, no, because it's 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 too complex probably to do, but the theory is is sound, the logic is yeah. sound that you should we shouldn't be well. I don't I don't know what you what the chat think. I don't think we should be incentivizing clubs selling academy players because then you know i always made a joke about well not a joke it was kind of facts about the city academy and i always said it was the city academy is a business it's there to generate money why yeah. well city want to be the best team in the world so if you want academy players to go into the city team you're going to need like special special talents now guess what they don't they don't come off trees like they're very 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 rare you know in the last few years what if you had you've had Bowden, palmer although some city fans didn't like palmer you had sancho who left Brian Diaz, maybe like very few players actually make it, and that's what in the last six, seven years. So it is, it is essentially a business. But these these rules, these rules, basically, like yes, now it is a business, man. You are hit, and of course, it goes further than that, Joe, because like now teams are probably looking around and not even thinking about academy and going right. We'll just buy talent, buy all these young players, yeah. Which yeah. You, you've also then got to look at it, and go like, is this is this really right? Buy all these 15, 16, 17 year olds because they know, oh, you'll you spend them what 500 grand, a million quid on a 15 year old, just like we've done with this American. You know, is this yeah. American ever going to play for City? Probably not, man. He'll probably come in and we'll probably flog him on for what five, six, seven million. City will look at that and go, well, you've just seven extra money there. Now, yeah. my point isn't whether or not that American's good or not. My point is that we are literally pushing football clubs to to to, to buy these really young players. At ridiculous ages, like no way City should be buying a 14 year old from America. That is just ridiculous. But we'd be forcing it because it's like all clubs are going to do it because that's the way you've got to generate the cash. And I just think, what, 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 what is going on here? But this is the yeah. way that they pushed us. Yeah, I'm compl- I completely agree. It's like it's, it's uh, the, the, any any system for me, any system that in the world where we're sort of looking at this this latest generation of academy players that's coming through and how they're all doing and like how you can see it reflected in the england team i think they i think didn't didn't st george didn't they build st george's park like however many years ago i think it was like a couple of a decade just over a decade ago or so or maybe just maybe a little bit longer and sort of that part of the plan of that was that all of the all of the separate england squads like from from under 16s under 15s 
to the senior squad. We're all going to train in the same place and it was going to mean that all the academies were going to get a massive regeneration boost from that. And obviously loads of Premier League clubs have invested in their academies off the back of the mad money they've been getting. A world where we, where we have to watch clubs sell those academy players. Like, look at Chelsea at the moment. Conor Gallagher's their best player, but they're going to get to the end of the season. Like They were flirting with the idea of selling to Spurs in January because, <laughs> because it ultimately it, 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 it's better for the long-term health of the club that he's sold for 50, 60, 70 million rather than kept and actually like make their, make, you know, their, their, their homegrown academy captain make their club better this season. That, that means nothing compared to the idea that they don't p- fail FFP next year and get slapped with a massive fine and a points deduction. Like mm. I don't, I don't, any, any system that by accident or not fit, like it helps. In, I, I imagine, I imagine the reason why it was initially brought in was to kind of soften the blow of, these kind of homegrown talents getting poached by the top six clubs, basically. Um, you know, if we come in, if we come in and we take uh, like Kyle Walker off Spurs, for example, who I think had probably been there long enough to be classed as one of their homegrown players, like we can, you know, that that means that Spurs get fifty million flat profit for investing all that time in sort of getting him through the academy and stuff like that. I I understand the logic behind doing it, but then the opposite way is that it then means that they're almost made the priority to sell because they, 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 they are worth the most on the books as a result of that. Um, and yeah, it's just, it, it's, it's just mad. I don't, I don't understand how there's, there's probably, there's probably people scrambling around Premier League offices now trying to, trying to attempt to think of a way to solve it and make it more palatable in the future. But I just think as it stands, it's, it's, it's broken, but they've already started, you know, the, the, the first, the first little bit of snow has already started coming down the mountain, and it is uh, the the avalanche is uh, is well and truly underway. I think it's going to yeah. be you know when you've when you've already been dishing out multiple points deductions this season, you can't turn around at the end of that season and say right well, we'll we've we tried it and we don't think it worked very well, so we're going to stop now. I mean, you've got to kind of see it through now. You've started it. You look like even more idiots if you do that. So exactly, it's it's, it's crazy. Listen, guys, keep your comments coming in on this one. I want to go through some of your super chats while we're at it. Uh, big up to LB says Vinny versus Walker tomorrow. Uh, I'm not ready. It says LB 1998. Yeah, well, preparation for the Real Madrid game again, isn't it? You know what I mean? We'll, we will be there. Uh, big up to SB says evening to LB and the chat. And of course, Joe. Joe is here as well. Um, big up to Rustin says salary cap on wages exceeding that equals luxury tax allocated to the other teams. Also, universal, not just Premier League transfer fee cap reduces the overall prices. Uh, of transfers and prevents clubs overspending. Uh, he then goes on to say, not perfect, but helps satisfy the need, prevent major losses and creates more parity through the leagues. Just my two cents. Uh, also, thoughts on Alex Baina. Thoughts. I, I did check out Alex Baina. His passing ability, bro, is 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 unreal. It, it is that little, he's got the little Rodri dink, you know what I mean, to the far post. That is absolutely unbelievable. Listen, here's my thing. I am against salary caps, right? I'll tell you why, yeah, why I'm against agreed. salary caps. Listen, I'm not trying to say that footballers are underpaid. My problem with salary caps is the player. The, the, the reason the, the, the players get a lot of money is because they bring in the money. Right? If they're not getting the money, who's getting the money? Because please don't sit there thinking, well, if we reduce everyone's uh, salaries, then they can bring the ticket prices down because you're in cloud cuckoo land. Who, where does that money go? If that money, if we, if we all of a sudden we say, sorry, Harlan, we can only pay you 200 grand a week, right? Where does that extra 300 grand a week or whatever it is go? Because it's not going to the fans. It's not going to reduce ticket prices. It's not going to reduce merchandise. Is it, is it going to go to the owner? Is it dividend? Is it better that Shape Man Saw can take that money back out of the club as a dividend, just like the Glazers do? My problem is, is where does that money go to? If, if you, yeah. it, 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 That money that's being saved, because the money from the, the TV rights is still going to come in. Where does that money go to? If someone could give me a legitimate reason or, 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 or place that that money's going to, then maybe I'll back it. But all I see is that that money is just going to stay in the, the club's bank account when the, it should go to the players because they're bringing in the money. I don't know. I don't. I know a lot of people won't agree. That's just my opinion. I don't know what well, you're. I think. Are. I think. I think the main problem with the idea of implementing a salary cap is that it, it's uh, and you can see by you know I think is that the NBA that he's got as his um, as his profile pitch like that's like you know like that. In America, it's totally different because you can. It's one league. There, there is one. There is one NBA. There is one NFL. There is one NHL. Like 
you, if, the, if the Premier League introduced a, a salary cap and a transfer fee cap, cool. Suddenly Spain and Germany and Italy pick up the slack. PSG suddenly run riot on the rest of Europe. Like It's the same thing when we tried to sort of implement the transfer window that closed the day the season started. But then we ended up with two weeks where like the rest of Europe could just cherry pick all the Premier League's players and nobody could replace anybody who went out. Like if yeah. we if we if the Premier League implements these kind of rules, it's absolutely pointless unless FIFA make it like a worldwide thing that has to be adhered to across oh, the entirety to. of it would, it would have yeah. to. But then you, then then I'm sorry, you've got to then ask is like, will some leagues adhere to the cap? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's like you know what I mean. Like, what are you going to go and tell Saudi Arabia that they've got a like they've got to do a salary cap? Like, why? Who's going to pick? Like, this is it. Like, if you put if you put a cap on these things, I'm not being with the, with the best will in the world. Like, I don't know. Let's think of it. Let's think of a town that isn't going to offend. You know, what? it's a city stream. Liverpool, right? Who's going to pick to live in Liverpool over Barcelona if they if if everything else on the table is equal? Like if everything else is equal and you've got the choice between living in one in what like we did it when we were when we were making our way up. Like mm -hmm. Manchester's not the Manchester before all this regeneration has happened, before Abu Dhabi stuck like a shitload of money into the city, like Manchester was not a very appealing place to an international footballer to live. If you're if you're from the continent, you don't look at Manchester and think, Wow, I want to live there one day. But we but you, but because we had the ability to sort of give people extra wages and that was just part of you know that's part of the necessity of making your way up from the level that we were that we started off at you have to you have to be able to provide those extra wages to maybe make someone think well i could go to barcelona or i could t pick up an extra 50 grand a week and live in manchester mm -hmm. but if you just but if you introduce a salary cap then suddenly like i mean it, it would probably be good for european football because you know you'd see a lot more people go to a lot more different places like random you know people might choose where to go based on where they want to live or whether you know or or, or, or which league they like rather than where the money is mm. but if we've got but what's the point of having the best league in the world with all the best you know with all the all the extra financial muscle and all the all the massive exposure and sponsorship and you know the the, the eyes that are on the premier league if we're just going to then sort of go well we have to put a cap on everything and we can't spend more than x yeah. amount and like and like you say it wouldn't benefit any of us we wouldn't get you know ticket prices wouldn't come down Pr players would just get annoyed that they aren't taking home the lion's share of what they're bringing in for the clubs um yeah it, it I, I understand the sentiment and i get why americans look at how it works in the nba and the nfl and stuff like that and would think it makes a lot of sense but I just think it, I just think football is just because it's so like multinational. It's just a it, it's a completely different sport and a completely different situation. Mm. Yeah, no, I I, I agree. Um, in principle, I'd love to have a salary cap because the money that the players earn is crazy. But at the same time, they earn it by by playing out there and, and bringing in the revenue. So should should it be limited? And 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 again, not to go on, but my my point on that is where does that money go if you're saving all that money where's that money going because it ain't coming back to us the fans they're not going to they're not going to reduce our sky subscription yeah our, our peacock subscription if you're in the states um they're, they're just not they're not they're not going to re reduce it they're not going to reduce ticket prices they're not going to reduce merchandise so where's that money go now if you can give me a legit answer then maybe i maybe i'll open it to it. all i see is it's just the club the club's just going to keep it earn interest on the money or the or the, the owners are going to take it out as dividends and i just look at that and go well is that is that better? Would you not rather it go to the players who are, who are bringing in the money? And, and 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 again, are you not just going to get then like dodgy dealings? Like if 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 a club's got like a like a like a mad owner or is is nation backed, then the club could pay him, and then he could be earning a little side 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 earner on some something else that he's doing. Well, there's a reason. There's a reason why Mbappe is um, an ambassador for Qatar, despite like you know like the, he's he's got a. He's got a fairly nice, nice gig with the uh, with the Qatari tourist board, hasn't he? And you would see a lot more stuff like and that's you know that's fine. I don't have any issue with that. I'm not suggesting there's anything untoward going on there. That's just that, that is something that is allowed to happen alongside it. No, it is, but it is that means, that. but that but that means that. But you would just see that all the time. And ultimately, the clubs who have owners who are capable of pulling in something like that. Would, would, would still anyone, win. How would anyone prove that that wasn't? Because basically, you could go. You should sign an Mbappe, right? So say, say, City were signing Mbappe. You say, right, we'll pay you two hundred grand a week, which is the max. And then uh, this other company in Abu Dhabi, or whatever, they'll pay you seven hundred grand a week. 
Yeah. Now, basically, the football club is, is paying him that money. But like, how would anyone? How would anyone? Can, and I think <clears> that's pretty much actually what what we've been alleged to have broken. Actually, funny enough, with with Man. Yeah, United. yeah. This is this isn't the this isn't the agenda, Lewis. Stop doing this. This isn't the, this is what yeah. we're trying to convince people we aren't doing. I know, I know. We're not we're not doing that. We're not doing that. But like, <laughs> I mean, how would you even? I mean, funny enough, like, how would the Premier League even prove that is what is you can't. happening? You, 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 you can't really. Like, it's kind of crazy. Um, big up to Chicken Wing as well. Since when is the Premier League? Oh, so when is this Premier League rules? The Premier League is corrupt. There is no, um, there is no how clubs have not broken these rules before. Uh, Forest, Everton, and Leicester charges. Well, the rules were voted in like 2013, something like that, and there was only six or seven teams that voted against them. And I think it was City, Swansea, Fulham, Aston Villa. Um, ooh, what were the other teams? Southampton, and then there's another team. And and actually, funny enough, Chelsea voted for it in the end. Um, I think Chelsea was scared of, of of Manchester City at that point, and you know they yeah. voted for their own their, their own downfall. They wanted to shut the door behind them. Yeah, exactly. But we, we got in, and now that they could be potentially screwed. But listen, um, I'm going to move on from this uh, this FFP talk because I want to speak about Liverpool and and Xavi Alonso. Um, the news coming out, Sky Sports News have reported via Florian Plettenberg of Germany that um, Alonso, and this has kind of been rumored for a while, but we've not had any sort of like proper proper sort of anyone really putting the neck out on the line, any journalist putting the neck out on the line. But Florian Plettenberg has now come out and said he believes that, basically, he says if, but when Javi Alonso leaves Bayer Leverkusen this summer, because he imagine he would leave, he is favouring Bayern Munich, of course, who have parted ways with Tuchel at the end of the season. But I wanted to come to you, come to, come to you on this one, because... It seems like if Xavi Alonso goes there, Ruben Amorim is is very highly linked with with the Liverpool job. There's a lot, there are some Liverpool fans that actually prefer Ruben Amorim to to Xavi Alonso. But where where do you as a City fan? What, what's your sort of take on Liverpool right now? Because I look at it right and go, I, I I think obviously Klopp's going. They're telling me he's a lot of the Liverpool fans tell me he's better than Klopp, uh, better than Pep. So um, that's in my case, if you're better than. Pep, then you're one of the best managers of all time, you know, either before or after um, Sir Alex Ferguson, depending on if how... You're better, if you're better than Pep, you are the greatest manager of all time. Like, if you're well, better than Pep, you are the greatest manager well, of all time. Well, well, that's what I think as well. But that's what some Liverpool fans say. So if they think yeah. he's better than Pep, could could Trent be leaving? There's news coming out today that Real Madrid are keeping yeah. the eye on Trent Alexander-Arnold. He's still not signed a new contract. Mohamed Salah, obviously, was subject to bids from Saudi Arabia in the summer. Liverpool turned them all down. They're probably going to be coming back this summer as well. You got Virgil van Dijk running his mouth saying, Oh, I might leave if something. No, they did backtrack yeah. on that slightly, but the fact is he still said it. Like, do you do you think that this I'm not saying Liverpool are gonna have some mad fall off, by the way. I'm not saying that they're gonna cut go from title challenges to like 10th or 8th, but like do you think that they could have a little bit of a dip? And if so, like where do you expect to I know it's kind of difficult because we don't know what players are are leaving, but where do you where do you just see the future for Liverpool right now? Because we've had some mad races against Liverpool. I respect Liverpool a lot as a football team. Um, but I, I just can't sit here and say I think they'll be challenging for the for, for, for the for the Premier League uh, next season. And the reason I don't think they'll be challenging for the Premier League is because Klopp, I rate him highly. He's gone. I think you're probably going to lose at least Salah, Van Dijk or Trent this summer. I'd be surprised if they keep all three. Now, they might do, but I'd be surprised. What, 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 what are you, where are you at with this? So... I've just had a look now. Salah and Van Dijk, as well as Trent, have all got their contracts expiring next summer. So that's like, so it's not even just a case of they're all being chased and they're all being like, and they're all like maybe thinking of that, you know, they've all got clubs interested in them. They're all, well, maybe not, not Trent is the exception to this because he's homegrown and 25 years old. Like giving him a new contract is an absolute no brainer from Liverpool's point of view. But Van Dijk and Salah, are at that kind of age. I think so, so Van Dyke is 32 and Salah is 31, I think. Yeah, he's 31. So Salah will be turning 32 at the end of this season. So you're gonna have two 32 year olds who are argue who, who who literally are your two best players, and you're and you're basically facing down the barrel of give, either giving them a two to three year deal where they're going to probably get a wage rise because of the of how important they are to your club. And will probably have little to no resale at the end of it versus being able to just sell them now when they've when you've when you've basically in terms of the the, the PSR rules you've paid you, you've basically paid off all of their contract fee uh, their their transfer fee by this point and any money you get is is it may as well just be like flat profit like whatever you sell is going to be 
99%, it's going to all go onto your profit books. So if you sell Salah for 100 mil this summer to Saudi Arabia, say they come back with a daft fee like that again, I'd be shocked if Liverpool have more than like five to 10 million of that to pay off. So they basically got 100 mil on their books. Mm. And that, and that is a, and that from Liverpool's point of view, when we've seen how FSG operate, we've seen very much that they're in this kind of, you know, when it came to Coutinho, when it came to Suarez, like there were players who were really, really important to them. But ultimately the money is, and, and the ability to reinvest that is more important than any one player. And, I, and, it, and it feels like if that opportunity comes around for either Salah or Van Dijk, because of, again, the, the, the alternative being you either lose them, you either let them run down the contract and leave on a free so you've so yeah you've kept your best player but you've also made zero money to reinvest at the end of it or you give them a new contract that means that you've got th- you've got players who will be in their mid 30s on your books on at least 300 grand a week maybe even 400 grand a week in Salah's case um they're really they're in a they're, they're in a position where and it, 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 it the Alonso move to Liverpool never really made any sense to me to begin with because it feels like any like going in after Jurgen Klopp is going to be like going in after Pep. It's going to be like going in after Fergate or Wenger. Like mm. it's someone who is just so intrinsically attached to Liverpool's identity and like mm. everything that, 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 you know, it's going to be like a fucking day of national mourning when he leaves Liverpool in the end. Like it's mad. Like and you, who wants to be the guy who goes in after that? Like I know Alonso's a, a, a club legend, but you're going in, when you look at it, you're looking at three of your best players with a year left on their deals, and the club and the and the club hierarchy above you, probably telling you, not even giving you the choice, but telling you that one or two of them are definitely gone, no matter what. Mm. I think that's a job that it it, it feels like Moyes. It feel, not not in that sense that you need a manager like him, but it feels like you need a manager to come in change things like come in and do like the d- just shift out a few things get rid you know change stuff obviously they're, they're, they're scrambling around now to sort of get every you know everything that they didn't have when Fergie left because obviously Klopp has ran a lot of the show at Liverpool and there's a reason why suddenly like they've hired like four or five upper level sporting level kind of staff to, to compensate for the fact that Klopp will be going um but yeah, it, it feels like it feels like such a smart move for Alonso to to pick Bayern over that because I Bayern know. are rel- Bayern are relatively simple. Obviously, they're a bit of a they're a bit of a basket club at the moment, anyway. But if they sell a few of their sort of more, um, I don't want to say like disruptive dressing room influences, but play, players who are clearly not currently happy under Tuchel, if you get rid of a couple of them, like Kimmich, I know for example is being linked quite heavily with us, and apparently he's very he's very much not happy with his time at the club because of Tuchel looking for a move. Bayern are kind of looking to move him on anyway because he's at that age where it's like you either give him a new contract at big money or just sell him. Mm. We could take advantage of that. But, but, but Bayern are Bayern. Like Bayern, are, they, can, they can have Leverkusen win the league, which they, they probably will do this year. They could win the league. They could win the cup. They could probably win the Europa League. Leverkusen could do it a treble of sorts this season. And Bayern is still the club that could just go, yeah, we'll have your manager, thanks. Like yeah, nah, hundred percent. Go on, mate. and 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 being and being at a club like that feels like a very easy couple of years for two to three years for Alonso. He's already he's already well known and loved by that club because he played for them under Pep. Um, you know, he's he's going in somewhere that uh, an environment that he knows, like he he knows the structure and the hierarchy of, of of Bayern Munich, and also like they're massive, like they're a huge club. Like that, he would, he would. It, it, it's a good excuse to get a, a few more years, a few more trophies under your belt, and then if you, you know, unless he gets found out and really fucks it up for him, which I doubt, because obviously he's showing that he is doing quite well with Leverkusen, even if it is in relatively short space of time, management-wise, um, it feels like a, it feels like a time for him to to just sort of maybe not take the the job that looks the most obvious on paper because everyone just sort of looks at it and goes, oh, we'll go to Liverpool because Klopp's leaving. But that has so much more risk than Bayern does. That Liverpool, the, that for, Liverpool, for Liverpool fans' sake as well, of not having, you know, it's like if you, it's like if you told us like, oh, it, say, say, say Liverpool, say, I'd say company, sorry, had his Burnley championship season and then Pep left that summer. A lot of people would say, oh, just get company. Because company's shown that he's a good manager, and company can take a club that is supposed to win the league to win the league. But I don't want that. I want I want someone to come in, sort out whatever's left after Pep. Someone who's a bit more of a safe pair of hands to come in short term, 
and then we'll get our guy. And I think Liverpool should do that. And I think Alonso is intelligent enough to know that stepping into the stepping into Klopp's place straight away is is not is not the best move for him and has a lot of you know has a lot of downside to it. So um yeah, it didn't really surprise me, but you know, Liverpool fans are gonna assume that everyone's got Liverpool as number one on their dream list of places to go, aren't they? So well, well yeah, they probably do, but I, I agree on, on on the whole risk versus reward thing, right? Javi Alonso right now is is rated as one of the like most promising managers in in, in world football. Um, he's obviously doing a fantastic job at Leverkusen. You've got to give him high credit in there. But let's just you know, I, I, whilst he's having a tremendous season, I, I still think they're unbeaten right in the Bundesliga. I don't think they've been beaten right. Yeah, he has only managed sixty odd games for them, right? So it's very yeah, very early exactly. on. Like Vincent Company last year, I know it's not, I know it's not the Bundesliga, it's the Championship. But like he he was managing the Burnley side like last year. That Neil Warnock, yeah, who's managed in the championship for a long time, has said that's the best team he's ever seen in, in the championship. Yeah. So, and look how it's getting on this season. Terrible. So yeah. I would just say with, with, with Javi Alonso, for, if I was his like, advisor, I, I'd basically say this to him. Look, if you go to Liverpool, the rewards, if you do well, mate, you're being catapulted as like the possibly one of the greatest managers around, right? You'll be up there with Pep Guardiola. If you can go to Liverpool, yeah, and win a, win a Premier League or win a Champions League in the first couple of years, given the fact that Jurgen Klopp only won one of each in nine years, like people will look at you and go, oh damn, like you are you are it. But the risk, the risk is that you could go there and you could you could struggle. Why? Because managing in the Premier League is difficult. Managing after a Pep, uh, managing after a, a Jurgen Klopp will be difficult. You know, we've seen this with after Wenger, we've seen it after Sir Alex Ferguson, and you will see it after Manchester City. That could be difficult. You've also got the contract situation, as you mentioned, Virgil van Dijk, Mohamed Salah. Listen, you you could sign a contract to become their manager, and the club could sell them. But both, you know, in in the transfer window, is Trent staying, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So. The risk free reward is very much skewed, in my opinion, to the downside of, of risk. But the rewards are astronomical, right? Yeah. You go to Bayern Munich, right? The risk of failing there is pretty low. Because let's be honest, yeah. If you get that Bayern team, get rid of the toxicity, as you mentioned. Yeah. Maybe add one or two players in the midfield. That team will win, will win the Bundesliga next year. You're just yeah. not telling me it's not going to win the Bundesliga with Harry Kane, Musiala. Kimmich, if he stays, Sane, Nabry, Coleman, Kim Min Jae, Petrovic, that new kid who looks... Is it Petrovic? Is that his, his name? Yeah, I think so, yeah. Something like that. The, 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 the new DM. Like, they've got a mint team. They just need, like, a little bit of uniting. I know when... The, so, so, the risk, the downside risk is... Oh, by the way, you know what I mean? Like, if they do rubbish in the... in If they get knocked out off Arsenal, which is a very big possibility that means they've not got past the quarterfinal stage for the last four years of the Champions League so it also means that like your upside potential of doing well in the Champions League is, is massive because you've not even got out of the last 16 the last three years but the obviously the rewards Pablo which his name is uh, the rewards of, of winning a Bundesliga are clearly lower but uh, yeah. it's, it's, it's 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 for me I just I just think for, for Xavi Alonso it's it's do you go with what risk do you want if, 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 listen, if you've got the minerals for it, yeah, and, and you want to be catapulted into one of the greats and you think you can do it, by all means, go Liverpool. Because if you do well there, you win the Prem, you win the Champions League, like, that's that's huge. But accept the risk is you could you could struggle for a couple of years. Go to Bayern. Yeah, if you win the Bundesliga, no one's going to say anything because that's what you're expected to do. But it's, it's safe. You can keep developing. You're still young, you know what I mean? You can keep developing as a manager. And then if you want to go Madrid... Oh, you want to go Liverpool in a few years? Fair dues. Maybe go when you've got a bit more, more experience. But I don't know. It's going to be an interesting one. As for Liverpool, obviously, they're linked with uh, Ruben Amarim, the Sporting Lisbon manager. They're linked with De Zerbe. I mean, I don't know wh wh where they're going to go, which, which manager they're going to go for. I mean, if you were a Liverpool fan, you're not getting Xavi Alonso. Where would you Where would you be, be going? Because I don't really know much about this Amarim guy. Apparently, he's, he's a very good no. manager. Apparently, stylistically, he's very, the way his team plays is actually pretty similar to Klopp. But... I, I yeah. don't really know too much about him. So young. I've heard a lot of, well. I, yeah, I've heard a lot of good things about Amarim sort of since he like he's been there for a while, I he at sporting. So I think for a while he's been kind of talked about. Been yeah, he's been he's been his his style's been sort of like touted as really good for a while. But I, I obviously like how many of us watch the Portuguese league? Like it's it just doesn't we we just we see him in the Champions League if they play against one of the English clubs and that's about it. Um I think um I, for me that like 
Nagelsmann, like his contract expires after the Euros, doesn't it? Like if he's done, if he's done after the Euros, I'd go for him. Like I think he's he showed at Bayern that he can do. You know, no, you know, his sacking at Bayern was very much like a political move rather than because of the actual results he was getting. Correct. So if you look at his track record, you would look at that and think he's someone who could very easily step into a Klopp, a Klopp like team and continue the sort of similar style that he's implemented, keep that all going. I, I, if, yeah, if I was Liverpool, I'd be going all in on that. If, 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 if Alonso's turned around and given Liverpool a no, I'm going all in on Nagelsmann in the summer, mate. But that, the, the problem that that comes with is that he's not doing a single thing for Liverpool until the Euros is over. And you don't want your new manager doing absolutely oh, yeah. nothing until That's like true. mid to late July. Um, so it, th- that comes with its own kind of issues as well. But I, I mean... I'm not, this might be unpopular. I'm not that big on Deserbi. I think he's I think he's showing this season with the massive inconsistency of and I know that Brighton are kind of a weird one because they've they've literally sold like, you know, they sold Caicedo and McAllister in the summer. So obviously they're not in a position where they can just like eventually the the the, the constant churn of South American Wonder Kids is gonna stop and you're not gonna be able to just replace everyone every summer every time. But I don't know. He was right. He was. It didn't like like Graham Potter was had Brighton at such a high level last season that you only really had to sort of keep that. I know that he did. He did more than just literally go right. You boys just keep doing what you were doing already. But I don't know. I feel like he had a really good platform to kind of build with last season. And after he got given an actual summer of his own, where even though he had to sell a few players, like he still, you know, Evan Ferguson. Like what's happened to him this season? Like he's been completely. Like null has he been injured? I don't know. Is he com- he's been completely like nullified this season? They brought in that Jao Pedro instead, to be fair, who's been really good. He, he's um, actually, I really like that Jao Pedro. Yeah, I know, I know um, half of his goals are probably penalties, but like he, he does, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I just think uh, basically, if it was if it was now, if it was this summer and I knew Pep, Pep was going this summer, I'm looking at this season and thinking, hmm, deserve it. Like maybe he's a maybe he's like maybe as that like that short term. Oh, he has had a knee injury. He's had a knee injury. I mean, looking at that. But he still played 26 games. Yeah, he's just on the bench a lot, you know. Yeah. And he's not he's not scoring many goals. He got like, see, I remember at the start of the season, he got that hat trick day, and everyone sort of went, oh, he's like Haaland, but Irish. And it's like, yeah. no, it turns out that he's basically done nothing since then. Um, yeah, I don't know. I feel I feel like um maybe if you're looking at like a short term sort of we, we got one eye on Alonso and you want someone who can come in and kind of like fill that void for a couple of seasons until he becomes available again, maybe. Yeah, possibly you go for a Deserby, but you can't really rely on the idea that Alonso is going to be free in two or three years' time, especially when Madrid will almost certainly be sniffing around him when he does yeah. free up again. Um, so, but, yeah, but I don't know. Not easy, is it? It's not easy. And City, listen, City are going to be in this position as well when, when Pep yeah. Guardiola is like, we, we talk about Liverpool and Liverpool fans might not like this conversation because it is, it's pretty grim. I mean, Nagelsmann... I mean, yes, it was all political when he got sat, but does he excite me that much? Probably, probably not. But like the 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 fact of the matter is, there doesn't seem to be a great deal of of managers out there, and even Xabi Alonso. I mean, yes, he, he's doing a great job. He's managed sixty games, so let's calm yeah. down a little bit. You know what I mean? Absolutely. So, um, you know, and by the way, like I say, if Liverpool fans are listening to this, please don't think that I'm just trying to murk your club because I'm fully aware that when Pep Guardiola leaves. I'll be in exactly the same position. And we'll be talking about the Deserbis. We'll be talking about the Nagelsmans and the, and, and the Amarims. And the, maybe, the, maybe the Vincent companies. I don't know. Because Everyone's going to be a downgrade no matter what. That's kind of the situation that you end up in when you have got a Klopp or a Guardiola leaving. Like, it's going to be whoever you get, unless you are getting literally... unless I think Liverpool fans, unless they got Alonso this summer, it's going to feel underwhelming no matter what. Like, it's going to feel like it wasn't what they wanted. And they'll... They'll obviously, whoever they get, if it's Amarim, they're going to, you know, we're going to read a shitload of feature pieces on The Athletic about how he's actually like the greatest manager that we've seen since, the greatest <laughs> Portuguese manager since Mourinho and stuff like that. That's going to happen. But ultimately, but really deep down, every Liverpool fan will be like, oh, I'm good. It's not Alonso, you know. And that's just how it, and that's how it is when there's so few top level managers that are, that are actually about, that aren't like, you know, aren't happy at whatever club they're at. Mm. Facts. It's factual information. And, and it might be why 
you know, Ancelotti's still at Real Madrid, you know what I mean? Like, it, would they maybe have got rid of him last year if, because there was rumours that they were not happy with Ancelotti last year. Obviously, yeah. didn't win the league, didn't win the Champions League, but maybe they just looked around and went, well, who is there out there? Zidane is just, just gone, you know what I mean? He seems like he's just done the, the, the treble, um, well, the, the, the back-to-back-to-back Champions League and then just dipped and he's waiting for the He's a Madrid job. manager, isn't he? He will just only yeah. ever manage Madrid and nothing else. I kind of respect that, that to be fair. I quite like it. Yeah, he knows he's he knows he's worth. He's like, I ain't going to a team that that that, that won't won't win me the uh, the Champions yeah. League. You know, people talk about Inzaghi, yeah, potentially, but like, really, how good is he? You know, what I mean, just being knocked out of the, the the tournament against Athletic. So I don't know. Listen, it's an interesting one, but there aren't that many managers out there. Listen, before we wrap up, guys, just want to touch on um, Marie, not Mourinho, Gareth Southgate, bro, to Manchester United. I don't know if you've seen oh. this news. It was it literally got broke a few days ago. People were like, yeah, this is dead. This is dead. This is a this is this is not a real story. And slowly but surely, different people have now been coming out saying, "Hang on a minute, we 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 believe that actually this this might be true." I think we all accept that whatever happens um, this this tournament at the Euros, Southgate is probably gone. Um, even yeah. if he wins it, I think he'll just step down, and um, I think that's probably the right thing. Bro, I, I look at this man and. I, if United get Southgate, I'm just like, what? That is absolutely... It's the funniest weird. thing. Honestly, of all the managers, of all, unless they literally, unless they literally rehired Moyes, I think it's one of the funniest things that they could do, like in terms of like what to... And, and, and I could look like an idiot this time next year when Southgate's like gone storming into yeah. top four again and, he's, and the football's mint. Yeah. You will not but it's not him. happening, is it? It's just not happening. I think, um, I think the weirdest thing about it is... So Southgate, and I, the only the only way that I can see how it maybe works is Southgate's man management. By all accounts, is is in terms of like keeping a, a camp of players happy, is very good. Like obviously with the England manager, there comes a lot of like because you don't have one squad that you work with, you basically have to deal with every English footballer in the country. Really, to every top level English footballer in the country, you're gonna you're gonna have situations where you have to piss people off, like where you have some things where you've got to be favoritism. There's some favoritism stuff involved because your your pool of available players is quite limited. So I get that. But I think everybody loves being on England. Everyone loves being at the England camp. Like everyone loves being there. And I think at the moment, United are a club where they're just looking for the players to enjoy being there. And that's the only, that's the, this is me doing the most, the most possible, like the, the, the most, I can see why they're doing it possible. Yeah. But ultimately, but ultimately that's like, that's like five percent of what you need in a manager. Of what you need in the manager, um, the other ninety-five percent, I am not convinced Gareth Southgate has it when it comes to club football. Like no, like nah. like no chance. It's just, it's mad. I can't understand what they're thinking. I, I genuinely have no idea. And again, like I said about Nagelsmann before, if we go and win the Euros, what we're gonna, he's gonna be, he's gonna be preoccupied until like the twentieth of July or something, or or maybe even August, like. What you, what's United's pre-season going to look like if they've not got a manager for the first, like, like Pep is going to be playing friendlies while the Euros is still happening. So what's Southgate going to be able to do with any of the team, like, in the summer, like, if, if, if they do want him? Like, what I don't understand what it's going to, no, it's, what it's going to look like. Yeah, no, listen, if, if, if Southgate goes to Man United, that will honestly be one of the funniest things I, I've seen. Because honestly, be when we got this new guy in, yeah, I thought, you know what? I actually think United might start making some like good moves now. You know what I mean? And if they go and get Southgate in, I'd just be like, that is that is wild. And you know what? They might get an initial boost like they did with Oli. You know when Oli went in there, we was all like, that yeah, is yeah, yeah. shocking. And then for, for like a couple of months, they started doing well. They beat PSG and everyone was like, oh, oh damn. Yeah. And then obviously Ferdinand said he's famous. Get the, yeah, yeah get, the, get the checkbook out, boys. Get, Man United yeah, are back. Man United are back. And then eventually... Like that, that putting your arm around a player only gets you so far before you actually need to coach them and, yeah. and, set, up, and set up the tactics correctly. And you know, eventually, that's what what lost Ollie his job. I feel like potentially the the same might happen with so um, Southgate, where initially you might get a couple of months where they're doing all right, but then eventually, when 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 the manager actually needs to coach, then then it, then it just goes downhill. But look, mate, that 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 would just be funny. Final point. Uh, before we wrap up, say you've been linked with uh, Bakayoko. I don't know if you've seen seen the news uh, mm, last yeah. couple of days. Um, I want to ask you about this because like, maybe a year ago or something like that, Pep came out with, and, and sort of said that like he's not that fussed on getting like fast wingers. And chat, I want your comments on this one as well. Um, yeah, he's not that fussed on getting fast wingers. Then we signed Doku, 
We've signed yeah. Savio, and of course, we don't fully understand what, what's going to happen with Savio. I've seen Craig Pike time in the chat before, our resident ITK, say Savio will definitely be on the, the pre-season tour. What happens after that is, is, is unknown at this moment, which I think is uh, we all kind of uh, uh, agree with. Now we're being linked with Bakayoko, and apparently, like City are seriously interested in him, especially because he's only he's only worth thirty million quid. Apparently, you can get him for, yeah. for cheap. Like, what's going on here? First of all, we're signing all these young players. Second of all, like we seem to be deviating from style, from the Jack Grealishes, the Marises, mm. the Bernardo Silvers to Doku, Savio, and potentially Bakayoko. Are you? Are, is this Pep reinventing the team again? Is it? Is it the the board buying? players because they feel like the style of play is going in a different direction, like ahead of the curve. Are we preparing for life after Pep and the new manager might want faster players? Like, what, what's the reason that all of a sudden we've gone from these controlled players in Grealish, Mares and Bernardo and we potentially might end up with Savio, Doku and, and Bakayoko? Or do you just think it's we're reading too much into it? I think it <clears throat> it's difficult to really know. Um, we have definitely, there have definitely been some transfer, like, Pro, like profile of player in the last year that has been odd. Like, I don't think anybody would have ever thought that going into this, like when you when you lose Gundogan, that you need to replace him with Matias Nunez or or Kovacic. Like, they're not players that you look at to replace what Gundogan brings. When you're sort of losing Mares, you don't look at Doku and think he's replacing what Mares brings. I think it's a it it feels like it's a conscious effort from Pep but then Doku felt like Doku felt like uh, well it's not how we're going to play but it's nice to have the option like he's a player who we can have who can bring it if we need it there will and be some I, games I, I, where I we'll agreed, need it I agreed with that by the way I yeah, say yeah. That and, and I think that's absolutely good. yeah it's, that's absolutely totally fair um, but I think if we're being linked with more players like if we get serious about Bakayoko like it looks very much like it's got and, and it starts to get to a point where it looks like it's going to happen I'm going to be very confused about what Pep Guardiola thinks this team's going to look like in a year or two because we're we're not in a we're, we're already in a position where we're just we're just giving up we're, we're just we're just turning matches into basketball games and I don't like that like Pep Guardiola's thing and why I love watching Pep Guardiola's thing is because it's relentless just pressure with the ball like we have the ball and we make you work hard to get it back because we're constantly making you run after it because we keep it we don't let you have it. You know, we end matches with like 70 plus percent possession on the regular. And and now we're just going to be in a situation where, you know, we're just going to be, it looks like we're, it looks like we're trying to turn ourselves into a counter-attacking team if this, is, if, this is, if this is true. Like, and I get why you might want to have players who can, because we have Haaland going the other way, who's like, if you're a counter-attacking team, Haaland is like your dream striker, like just some battering ram who's, who can run at like 90 miles an hour and just finish it off at the end of it. And it looks like maybe we're trying to bring in players who can complement that ability to counter attack, but I just don't. I just don't see why you need a lot of them. I don't see why you need more than just Doku as as an option to do that. When maybe maybe, maybe yeah. two max. Like I, yeah, you know, maybe you want two, but like to get a third. Like, listen, I'm not. I'm not saying like I'm 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 mad against it. Like, don't get me wrong, chat. Please don't think I'm like moaning at it. I just don't understand. Like and 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 maybe maybe in a year's time I'll sit there and go oh bloody hell I see I see it I see the vision I see where we're going but mm. you can't you know unless like you're a mad tactical you can't help but be a little bit confused about looking at how we played over the especially last year with what Joe's saying like mad pressure mad dominance of the ball wingers who just never lost it in Mares Bernardo and Grealish to just spam spam take on players with like you know Doku and yeah. listen Savio maybe doesn't spam as many take on maybe he's a little bit better with the ball and stuff but I, I don't too, don't don't really know too much about Bakayoko but it does seem like we might be heading for a little bit of a change. Yeah if there's obviously been some rumors recently as well about Jack Grealish and maybe his future at the club perhaps like being that's gotta be not, BS man. If it and that yeah I'm 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 hoping that it is. I'm very much hoping that it is. I think it probably is. But let's assume for a moment that it's not. Like, I don't want us to replace him with a Bakayoko. I want us to replace him with a Musiala or with someone who can, you know, someone who can keep, can do what Jack Grealish does. Like, keep the ball, win some little shitty shithouse fouls when we, when we you know, oh, we're in the, that point of the game. Him. Oh, yeah. I mean, he'd be great, but I don't fancy giving... Napoli 200 mil for him or whatever stupid amount of money they'd ask for. Um, 
but but I want that. That's that's the that's the kind of player that we want. Like someone who is capable of doing that. And I don't think pace merchants are the players who are capable of doing that. Um, I'm saying this with no knowledge of Bakio. I don't watch PSV. Um, so I've no idea what Bakayoko is like. As someone's just said Liao in the comments there, he's another one who we were linked with for ages, mm. who fits into that sort of Bakayoko Doku mold. Obviously, Liao's a bit more physical and a bit and has a bit more about him in the in like uh, technically, I think. But they're not they're not slowly game down control kind of players. And I and I feel like if we are going to say if Jack Grealish is on the way out, which is possible, but probably not likely. But if it happens. We need to replace him with a like for like kind of player because we're, if we if we buy too many pace players, we then no longer have the option of the control players on the wing because we don't have any. Mm-hmm. So maybe Bob is that guy. I think Bob probably is that guy. But um, I, you know, do you do you if you lose Grealish, do you just go? Ah, it's fine. We got Oscar Bob because realistically, he ain't going to play over the sixty million signing that you make that summer. Yeah, like, yeah no, just... I, I would also uh, say that Lucas Paqueta can play left. Has played. There is that. Yeah. Could he potentially? Yeah. Because I think he could hold the ball up on that left hand side. Yeah, very possibly Maybe not to the same, same degree as as, as Greenish. Because I think he'll probably fuck around with the ball a little bit more. But um, yeah, he he could probably still do it. Yeah, but I I, I just think that, I mean I just don't see why we would sell Jack Greenish. Listen, I know he's I know he's had a tough year, but I do also feel like he's been a bit unlucky with injuries, and then he come back, started playing well. His house got burgled. You know what I mean? Was yeah, all there's, a, there's a lot going on for him. Like he's had a, he's had a mad year, man. Like I just feel like with, with Grealish, I'll say now he's been, he's not been great this year. But I'm gonna say like let's give him this running. Yeah, you know I mean, give him the yeah. running. But to, to to say sell him, I think's I think that's yeah. kind of that's kind of you wild. still see when it, when he when he has played, you still see what he brings. You see, like with the, the the our our best passages of play in the other than the um what was the game the Luton game in the um, in the FA Cup. Other than that, where we just basically dominated them from start to finish, our best passages of play were the first 20 minutes against Copenhagen and the first half an hour against Luton. Or whichever way round it was that Jack Grealish played. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. like those like those those bits where we had that that basically our, our dream starting eleven for those games, yeah. basically. We looked amazing. And I want to see that come back. And obviously Jack Grealish hasn't had a great season. I, I think probably it's more of a, I think it's more of a mental barrier for him this season as much as it is a physical barrier. But um, I think if he just gets back into the regular habit of playing these games and sort of being part of a winning team again, that'll all that'll all change. And I want to see him get get that chance at least. Yeah, no, same, same, uh, same. Uh, um, guys, make sure you drop a like on the stream if you've not done so already. Built to A May one says yes, yes, with a seven months and Piplup says Bakayoko to Girona. Uh, Savio in the city squad, but yeah, but very potential. But it, I mean, listen, the back of the old co signing just seems a bit strange to me. So, um, let's see what happens. But listen, been a good shot. Anything else you want to speak about before we before we wrap up, bro? Um, no, no, we, we've done a bit of laughing at Southgate, haven't we? That's all we really need yeah. to. That's, that's a good, that's a good place to, to leave it on. Well, that'd be another hour. <laughs> yeah, ticket ticket prices like look if do what I do what I do and just sack it off and go to watch Oldham instead. Like that's fine. Like you know, city aren't, city don't need your money. Lower league clubs need your money. Um, if you're that bothered about price increases, just don't pay it. Like job like that that city city don't give a shit about your basic lift. So just simple. There you go. There Sorry. You go. Listen, um, nah, it's, it's it's called hard facts, man. Um, <laughs> listen, guys, make sure you drop a like on the stream. Hope you've enjoyed. I was going to do the Spain game, guys, but Rodri wasn't playing, so I was like, fuck it, can't be arsed. So we're going to bed, man. I've been up since 6 a.m. Um, hopefully, you guys uh, have enjoyed the show. Big up to Joe for coming on. Um, what podcast you on this week, man? Um, City Report podcast. I will be on there at some point this week. Um, I think I have a City Extra article coming out either to, it, in the next couple of days anyway about the whole um, the Big Steve versus Adam McCola, um boot off and how oh, yeah. it just kind of is very symptomatic of how fans of other clubs just believe that we're guilty no matter what and will never not believe we're guilty um, so that's um, that's all coming in the next couple of days but yeah that's, that's, that's about it for me really cool Cool. Nice one. Listen, guys, hope you enjoyed the show. If you did, smash a like, subscribe. If you're watching this back on the replay, please give us your thoughts in the comments section below. Leicester hit by FFP and they're challenging the Premier League, potentially suing them, apparently people are saying. Alonso rejecting Liverpool as our main rivals over the last few years. What do you think of that as a City fan or if you're a Liverpool fan? Let us know your thoughts on that. 
And then just generally Southgate T90 comments, just spam a lot of laughing emojis in the comment section. I'll be back tomorrow. Well, actually, might, I don't know what's happening tomorrow, man. I'm out all day. I don't know what's happening tomorrow. So I might not be back tomorrow. If I am, I am. It's not, I'm not. By the way, Martin is doing a 12 hour stream on Mancunian Way tomorrow from midday to 12 p.m. midnight. Uh, charity stream, yeah, for Alzheimer's. He's trying to raise 250 quid, man. So if everyone goes in there, even if you can just donate a quid, yeah, there's 250 people. If everyone goes in and donates a quid, you can end his stream early and, 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 and finish. You probably won't end his stream early. But let's try and get there. I'm going to donate some cash to him as well. So let's see. He's doing it for charity, Alzheimer's. Get yourself in there. Stream will redirect you there. And uh, peace out. Catch you in the next one, guys.